Right, saints, somebody volunteer and tell me what was the message of that song? Ooh. Well, I'm gonna tell you this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. It's like our last and last week. How can you tell somebody about your faith mm. and, and your works? The work that you show is not showing about your belief. Uh, you, you're contradicting yourself. All right. You, you're not showing. Uh, you're not. You're not walking a walk. But you're talking to talk. You're talking. All right. All right. You're not walking a walk. Yeah. That's yeah. what I think. Is Amen. True. Amen. So true. So true. And I got a hint for us. Every lesson that we're going to study in the book of James <laughs> carries a theme. It just deals with different aspects of it. it and, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But very good. Uh, uh, it, it, the words, some of the words in that song said, practice what? What you preach. And I'm going to tell you something funny before I say a word of prayer. I said, ah, I, I remember a song like that. Uh, yeah, my man Barry White. Maybe I can maybe, maybe I can play that. And then I played it to myself. And I said, "No, they kicked me out the church if I play that." <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, as I like to joke, uh, Barry helped me father both my children. Amen. So, uh, 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 but but that's a much better song because <laughs> she said, "The way you live your life." you may be preventing somebody from coming to Christ because they see the way that you live. And uh, yes, I, I, this, this continue with that theme. Let's, let's pray. Let's ask the Lord. To guide us. Our Father, which art in heaven, we thank you and praise your holy and precious name, dear God. Thank you for this privilege to study uh, what James had to say and how you spoke through him, not only to the Jews in that day, but to us today. And Lord, help us to apply your word in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Mm -hmm. let's, uh, let's get a volunteer to read all of our printed texts. We are reading verses in the second chapter, verses 14 through 26, and then we'll discuss it. Alrighty, I will. Okay. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. What doth it profit, my brother, and though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto him, depart in peace, be ye warm and, and filled notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body what doth it profit even so faith if it hath not works is dead being alone yea a man may say thou hast faith and i have works show me thy faith without thy works and i will show thee my faith by my works 
Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, which said, Abraham believed God, and it was impacted unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith alone. Likewise, also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Amen. Amen. Yes. Uh, today we're going to be studying something that is a disturbing fact. And in fact, uh, and I, I don't believe it applies to anyone that's, that's, that's tuned in today or that's here, but there would be some people that would take exception to what I am about to say. I know that there are certain theologians and it's not what I say. It's, it's what the Bible is clearly saying saints and, because it's a, it's a disturbing fact uh, to people. Uh, because there are people who believe in God. They believe in Jesus Christ. But they don't believe to the point of salvation. That's a problem in the church today. Amen. And it's always been that problem. That's why James is writing about it. Uh, they, they believe the facts about God, they, they believe the facts about Christ, but there's no commitment when it comes to living for uh, Christ, saints. Uh, they, they, because uh, someone who has the kind of faith that James is talking about, it ought to be marked by repentance in their life. No, none of us are perfect and it and, and, and won't be until we see Jesus, amen? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there ought to be a direction in our life. So there, there ought to be repentance. And, uh, and there ought to be a commitment to want to live for the Lord. That's why James, in this entire book, <clears throat> and let's go back and just a quick review. <clears throat> he is going to be giving us different tests or it, who he's writing to. He's writing to us. He, he's writing to the Jews and in that day, and anybody else that happened to be listening that may be a part uh, of the church, uh, because there were, of course, Gentiles were part of the church at this time also. Because the first thing that we learned when we looked at that first chapter uh, was was what what was the first test? What was the first test as to whether you're a true believer or not? Right, and when it's talking about counting all joy, it's talking about what? Are we in trials? Trials, yes. Trials. Your response to trials says a whole lot about your faith. Amen. Amen. I was talking with someone in Walmart yesterday, and they said, "If if COVID." don't change folks nothing will and i said amen <laughs> true because one of the things that we have discovered uh it, it has been a test of faith and it has challenged the church amen mm -hmm. and there has been a great falling away because some people don't deal with trials very very well and especially if they are an unbeliever uh the second thing that we learn uh and it, or that's in that book we didn't we didn't go to this we just uh, uh focused on uh, uh one through 13 but if you look at the rest of that first chapter it's also there was a test of temptations how you deal with temptations mm -hmm. uh, and then uh finally he said it depends on how you respond to the word 
Some people don't respond to the word. Uh, they, they hear it, but it goes in one ear and out the other because they never work to apply it. They abort the word rather than letting, letting the word give birth and God work a work in their lives. Now, last week, that test was uh, how you treat the poor and the needy. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. I, I, how, how do you treat people? Amen. Uh, are you just kind to that rich man and tell that, that poor man to just sit back there and <laughs> in, in, in the corner? Um, uh, but today we're going to be studying another test, and it's the test of our works. The test of our works tells us something about our faith. Somebody find for me and read Second Corinthians 13 and 5, and let's look at what Paul had to say to us. Second Corinthians 13 and 5. Everybody find it yet? Okay, thank you. Hey. Examine yourself, whether you be in the faith, prove your own self. Know you not your own self, how the Jesus Christ is in you, except you respectively. All right, amen, amen. Listen, this is Paul talking. Because some people try to pit James against Paul. We'll talk about that in this study. But Paul himself is saying, that what we ought to do as believers is we ought to examine ourselves, whether we're what? In the faith. In the faith. In the faith, because not everybody is in the faith. Uh, everybody talking about heaven, they ain't going there. Amen. Yeah, yeah. And so James is dealing with faith, and there's two types of faith. There's two types of faith that we're going to be dealing with. And the first type is what? Look at verse 17. And what? Yeah, 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 yeah. Look, look at how it qualifies it. Amen. It's dead faith. Now, now, starting with verse 14 and through verse 26, he's talking about another type of faith. What's the opposite of dead? Amen. It's a living faith. So the, the, there's either, there's uh, everybody's got faith. They got one or the other. Their faith is either dead or it's alive. It's living. It is a living faith. And we're going, and he's going to give some great examples. He's going to give three different examples about dead faith that we're going to look at this morning. And he's also going to give three examples about living faith that we can learn from. Amen. So let's dive in. Because and 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 uh, uh, we live, and, and I, I saw this word last week at uh, uh, Ed and Jackie's home church there in uh, in Killer, and the uh, pastor flashed something up there on the screen uh, on the PowerPoint, uh, and he said that that we have moved from. Legalism and legalism has been a problem in the church. To and this, y'all check out this. This ain't a ten cent word. This is at least a twenty five cent word. Antinomianism. <laughs> now let's break that down. Antinomianism. Anti means what? Against. Nomianism means law. So there are people that are against. That, hey, there are no moral standards. You can marry who you want to marry. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can believe what you want to be. A lot of those 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 moral laws they they don't apply. They don't apply to us any day. So we've moved too far, too far away. Uh, and, and because the Lord didn't want us to be legalists, and He certainly doesn't want us to be anti-law. Because Jesus said, "I came not to destroy what." The law, but to fulfill it, to fulfill it, and it ought to be fulfilled in us, saints, as we uh, live out his character. 
So let's look at the, the characteristics of a dead faith first. Uh, and what is the first characteristic of dead faith when, we, when you look at verse 14? No action. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tony, Tony, Tony Evans says that your feet ought to follow your faith. If your feet aren't following your faith, then maybe you got a dead faith. Amen. Hmm. I ought to be doing something. Amen. Uh, for the Lord. Now, that does not save me. And that's where the controversy comes in. And people try to pit Paul against James uh, and show you how far back it goes. Uh, Martin Luther. Martin Luther thought the book of James should not be in the Bible. Martin Luther <laughs> started Protestantism, all right? <laughs> he thought that. And he had, a, he had a wrong idea, a wrong concept about what James is communicating. And really, Paul and James are in line with one another. They're in line with one another. So, uh, yes, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, you confess something that you don't live out. Uh, and and he gives an example, doesn't he? And what mm -hmm. example does he give? Somebody being naked and hungry. Mm. All right. Or. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and so what what does it profit us uh, for a man to believe, say he believes? And that he, he has no works. He mm. can see a situation like that and not be moved. Let me tell you something that's sad. I, I'm a crier. I'm a crier. All right. Uh, I can be watching a movie. I I, 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 I tell you something I, where I just boo-hoo. <laughs> I, I love watching the uh, every year the uh, Hall of Fame speeches in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And when they talk about their life and what they went through in order to get there and how, how they love their mother and father, their children, et cetera, you know, that, that just moves me and I, I can't help but shed some tears. But you know what the saddest thing is? We, there are situations that we're around every day that we have become callous to. We've, 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 we've become callous almost callous to shootings mm -hmm. in this country. <laughs> they, they don't even, uh, hey, I, I'm gonna just turn the news off because I don't even want to hear about it. That's their problem over there. Amen. Uh, and, 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 and that, you, your faith ought to cause, move you to want to make a difference. Amen. It ought to move you to want to make a difference. Remember, Jesus gave the parable of the soil when he gave the parable of the soil and the good soil. What did the good soil have that's in common with this lesson that we're studying today? What did it have in common with it? It was alive, I guess. <laughs> fertile <laughs> ground. The seed, the seed would grow. Oh, yeah. Amen. yeah, amen. Yeah, yeah. It it uh it and, and and once that seed would grow, what came from that seed? Hey, you said a key word, sister. Amen. Fruit, fruit. Come here, John 15. <laughs> if you want to hear us, there ought to be some fruit in your life. Amen. Mm. Yeah, yeah. There ought to be some fruit. Jesus talked about it as well. That's why he said on that Sermon on the Mount that a tree is known by what, how? By, by the fruit. fruit that it bears. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so uh, Paul and James are not at conflict. Uh, here's what Paul is saying. Paul is saying that salvation is only by grace. Amen. 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 There's nothing that I can do.
to earn my salvation. I'm glad that I'm not trying to get in the 144,000. Y'all hear me? Because there's a group of people, that's what they're trying to do. Uh, I, I, I'm glad that, uh, and, and they, they witness a whole lot more than we do. Uh, and and, 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 and I, I'm glad that I'm not in a group of people that, it, that believes that, that uh, they're going to have their own heaven. They're they, they going to be gods themselves. Amen. Y'all know I'm talking about things that happen every day. I, I pass by a church like that every time I go home. Amen. On, on, on uh, uh, Meridian Road, uh, there, there's a church like that. So I'm glad that that's not what we have to do. But at the, by, by the same token, what James is saying is that salvation is only by grace. And because it's by grace, it's going to produce works. Come here, Paul. Look at Ephesians 2 and 10. What ought to come out of that salvation? Because it's by grace that we're saved. By faith. Not of ourselves, right? None of us can boast about that. But one of the things that it's going to produce is good works. Good mm -hmm. works. If there are no good works in my life, that is a good indication that I, I've never had. I don't have that saving faith. It can be a dead faith. Uh, and because no one is saved, the Bible teaches us without becoming a new creation. Amen. Man. Yeah. Yeah. And you, what, what does it start with? It starts with repentance. Amen. Lord, I'm sorry uh, for what I've done. Mm. And then I submit to God. Amen. Amen. And, and when you submit like his son submitted to him, that's going to be an obedience that would come out of it. And there's a love toward God. That's why some people can't do certain things in the church because they really don't have a love toward God. Amen. They are separated uh, from, from God. Uh, and that's why we ought to examine ourselves. So what's the second thing? And that's found in verse 15. Verse 15. Uh, what is that, that's, that marks a dead faith? Or 16. I know. 16. Yeah, 16, where you do nothing. You're right. Ap yes. Apathetic. Amen. Yeah. 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 You know what, what, what somebody said the opposite of, uh, of love is? And, and somebody, what would most of you say? No, it's Eight. not. It's apathy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't care. Have you ever been in love with somebody and they come up and tell you that you know what? I don't even care about you anymore. Mm. Y'all, that hurts more than anything else in the world. You'd almost rather see them just hate you. But you don't, you don't even matter anymore. Amen. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 that's not that that is a dead faith. That's why John said in 1 John 3, 17 and 18. Uh, because, you know, most of us are familiar with. John 3 and 16, but you need to be become more familiar with John 3, 16 through 18, because what John says also, he agrees with what James is saying, that if you can live like that and not care about people, you need to examine yourself whether you are in the faith or not. I told you this is a challenging lesson, and that's why it's not popular. Uh, amen. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not popular. Uh, Yes, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That is good. That, that's so true, Tony. <laughs> I I agree. Yeah, yeah. That's why, saints, we cannot turn our backs on people that are destitute. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll say this and then I'll move on because I know our time is slipping away from us. But Jesus even said something about that. Matthew 25. Just a quick review. He said that there are people that are going to be judged. And he's going to say, Lord, I, I, did this. I went to church every Sunday. I, this, this is paraphrasing. All right. I, I paid my tithes. <laughs> I was a member of the brotherhood. I was, in fact, I was on the deacon board, Lord. 
I taught Sunday school. And and you know what, what Jesus said he's going to say to me? I was what? I was hungry. You didn't do what? Feed me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was in jail. He didn't visit. I was sick. You did. Amen. Now that's what Jesus said. I'm the telling you, we days. we got to grow in those areas, things. Amen. 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 Yeah, it makes a difference. It makes a difference. Let's look at the third mark of a dead faith, of a dead, because it, it says at the end of verse 17, he calls it what it is. He calls it a dead faith. All right. In other words, it doesn't bear any fruit. Um, and the third mark is is found in verse 18, right? What's the third mark? Just tell me the illustration that's there. Mm. Verse 19. Look at verse 19. What's the illustration that it gives? Mm. Devils believe you. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. There are people that are rolling over this morning and they could care less about the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> they can't and they can make all kind of excuses amen um and, and and they'll say that i i believe in god and james said something that's whoo it's cold isn't it he said guess what you it's don't even have, you don't even have demon faith because they at least they have the sense enough to shave <laughs> <Demon> faith. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll come here and put on a front <laughs> yeah and you don't even get nervous about it. You'll do anything you want to do because it pleases you. Amen. Yeah. And and, and so, yeah, I, I've stopped saying we got demon faith. Some of us don't even have demon faith. We pass them. There, there's no emotion. Amen. We're apathetic uh, toward God. It, it is a fruitless faith. Um. There's a, a quick example. You can read it for yourself sometime. And, and this is something that ought to shake us up. Uh, it's in the, and it's part of my daily Bible reading this week. It's in the eighth chapter of Acts. And Philip, Philip was a deacon. And he was preaching in Samaria. And there were people that were being converted. Hmm. And he would lay hands on people. And those people would begin speaking in the spirit. And so there was this man by the name of Simon by the name of Simon, and Simon, uh, uh, he said, man, I got some money here. <laughs> I'll pay you if you just show me how I can be, I can do what you're doing. And, and, uh, uh, and, and of course, he was rebuked. He, he was rebuked by, by Peter. And, but here's the thing that ought to scare us. Simon had so-called repented. He had been baptized, and the word says he was continuing to follow. Oh, man, y'all don't hear me. <laughs> there are a lot of people today, they, 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 they came up here, they walked up front, and they repented for a moment. Amen? And, 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 and then, and then they, they, they got in that water. Amen? And they were baptized uh, in obedience, uh, according to God's word. And they continued to, to go to church, just like Simon. But you know what, what, what uh, Peter told him is, brother, you need to repent. You know, we're going to have a revival in a, in a couple of weeks. And, and saints, uh, one thing about this lesson we're studying, see, we can grow weak in our faith as well. And Lord, help us. I'm talking to Bill right now. Because uh, we don't want to get apathetic. We don't want to get weak, but we want to be on fire for the Lord. Now, let's, let's, let's spend the balance of our time uh, looking at verses 21 through 26, because there's a contrast here. He's contrasting that dead faith, and he's going to start talking about a living faith. Even though He doesn't use the word living, but he gives some examples, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Now, what's the first example that he gives uh, to, to, to show that it's a test for us to show whether our faith is living or not? What was the first example that he gave? Abraham. Abraham. 
Abraham, that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. And notice some words that he says there. He says, was not Abraham our father? Because remember the audience that he's speaking to. Yes. Because if there's anybody, even to this day, even though they're not the only ones that, that say this, Muslims say this as well. They say Abraham's my father. But the one thing the Jews of uh, pop they collar on Peacock Pride about it, is that Abraham's our father. Now, now, hey, follow James as we go through this. Uh, and, and they say that because racially uh, they're related to him. Uh, and, and he was the standard of righteousness. That's what the Jews believe. And, and so we're part of Abraham and they were proud of it. Read John 8 sometimes and, and because they, they challenged Jesus on that. In fact, they thought Jesus was crazy because he said before Abraham was. <laughs> I am. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that, yeah, I know Abe. And if you, if you knew Abe like I knew Abe, you, you'd follow me. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but but what James goes on to say that the, you got the wrong thinking about Abraham. The true the true children of Abraham are the faithful. Faithful. Amen. Yeah, they're the ones that believe, and they mm. believe whether they are a Jew or mm. a Gentile. Mm. Saints, it really doesn't matter. Uh, mm -hmm. And he and, and he says some key words in verse twenty one. He says that they're justified by works, and what does that mean? Uh, what, what and he's not what what and this is where Martin Luther had a problem with uh, what what James was writing here, and he had a he had a major misunderstanding. Many theologians believe, and I certainly believe that to this day because it ought to be shown up in, in it ought to show up in our works uh, because um, both Paul and James use this same scripture. Paul did in Romans 4, go back and read it, and James did, is, is doing it here because uh, in, in, uh, in James 2, uh, and because he, he believed what? That Abraham's willingness to do justified him. Amen. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, 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 it's not the thing that saved him. It was God's grace that saved him. Because you go back, another thing I want you to do, it, make note of it, go back and read Genesis, the 15th chapter, amen? Because it was by God's grace that he chose Abraham, that he saved Abraham. It's by God's grace that he saves us. Amen. We don't right. save ourselves. But mm -hmm. there ought to be a willingness on my part, on your part, amen, on our part as believers to do what he says in his word. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That there ought to be that kind of of, of willingness, saints. Uh, now he he gives a second example. What example does he give there? Rahab. Yes. Amen. Very good. Very good. Yes. Rahab. Now, who was Rahab? Harlot, harlot. Oh, prostitute, Gentile. <laughs> Look at the contrast here. Right, yeah, that's, that's good, Jack. That's good. Because Abraham was what? A he was a Jew. Father yeah. of the Jew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The father of the Jew. Who was Rahab? She was a harlot. Harlot. Hey, Amen. Yeah. She was a lady of the When you came to visit, <laughs> when men came to visit their house, they came for some... You know what I mean. Amen. And that was Rahab. And yet God chose her. Y'all, he's saying something in there. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. That you would choose a wretch like me. Amen. Amen. I'm not so That's special it. that you should have chosen me. Thank you, Lord. I'm, I'm like a Rahab in many respects. And Amen. He, yes. Yeah, Lord. So, yes. You chose me. Amen. Yeah. And Dad, praise his name. Yes, man. Yes, I wanted Dad. to say too, you never understand how your act of faith, act being the operative word, can change the course of your whole entire Amen. family, of the mm. destiny of your family. Amen. 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 That's true. And happened. that's so powerful to me when you think yeah. about Amen. my decision yeah. of faith and yes. change the course of it. Your, you know, yes, yes, of your children and children's children. Absolutely. 
That's why you often hear the pastor say to us as men that that's why it's so important to us because most, uh, it, it there's a high percentage, I don't remember the percentage, it's even in the 80s or the 90s, that the entire family is saved if that man is saved. Mm. One of the most important ministries that we can have, Maury, I'm speaking to Maury and Maury knows why, is, is to have a men's ministry because we need to reach men for the Lord. Amen. And some of the despicable conditions that our families are in is because they have no leadership in the home from the man. Amen. Yeah, it makes a difference. Uh, and woman. <laughs> now, Abraham wasn't a perfect man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not leaving out the women, but I, 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 I'm, I'm, I know I'm I know I'm with the Bible, amen, <laughs> when it says that's 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 important. That's why he challenged Adam. And, and it, it, he didn't challenge Eve first. He challenged Adam. Amen. And uh, uh, because it makes for a much stronger home. Amen. But, uh, because what happens is faith is cooperating with works and is making things happen. And that's what that's what Rahab did. Uh, mm -hmm. Because she was obedient also. She was obedient in a different way. See, the diff another difference between her and Ab a Abraham, God spoke to Abraham directly. You look at it in Genesis 15. He didn't speak to Rahab directly, did he? Uh -uh. There was yeah. a movement in the heart. But it was through somebody else that came there that talked to her. Mm -hmm. There's uh -huh. some people that's going to be in church today. They're going to hear a word. That There's a word that's being spoken. Well, right now. Hmm. <laughs> it's enough to say. Amen. Yeah. And people ought to respond to, to that word. They She did, and she was obedient. She was obedient to them and followed their in, instructions. And not only was she saved, but her entire family was saved. And guess what? Both Abraham and uh, Rahab, read Matthew 1, are in the genealogy of Jesus. Hallelujah, y'all. Amen. Amen. Right. Right. She did. Amen. Amen. That that that's good, Verily. Yes, Rahab had the faith, but Amen. the way she, she and, and what the scripture is saying to us, there ought to be a manifestation of my faith. Just just like Abraham did some things. Hey, hey, look at Abraham. We don't have time to go off go through it because God tested his faith. Read read Genesis twenty two, his only begotten son. <laughs> he asked him to do what. Exactly. You jump over and you read Hebrews 11. It says that he had the faith that God was going to resurrect him from the dead, even if he had taken his life. That's the kind of, it, it proved his faith. And God knew he was for real. That's why faith and works go together. Works don't mm -hmm. save us, but it is evidence that we have had a saving experience. That's the same thing with uh, with with Rahab. Uh, she believed and 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 she acted on faith. Yes, and I think did. about also the scripture that says that many a husband will be won over by the believing acts of their wives. Amen. Amen. Very true. And, Very and true. So, so remain faithful. All is there. Don't kick him to the curb. That's right. <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Now here's the here's the last one, uh, the last one that, that indicates a living faith, uh, and it might be easy to miss this, and uh, it's it's uh, it is uh, he gives an analogy, uh, doesn't he? Because he mm -hmm. said faith without works is what, yeah. yeah. Mm hmm. So what is he saying to us? I mean, I just uh, attended my aunt's funeral this, this week. Uh, the life had gone out of her. There was no way that she was going to get up out of that casket. 
He's saying that some of our faith is nothing but a corpse. Hmm. There are some dead men and women walking coming into churches today. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Because it ought to be some evidence in Amen. you and I hmm. if that faith is real. Otherwise, your faith is dead. Hmm. It's going to have a life. It's going to have a spirit. You're going to want to do things for the Lord. That's, mm. you, know, I, you know, I don't beg people to give because if you're dead, you don't want to give. <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's not in you. Or either you have strayed away so far as a Christian that you're not in line with God's will and you'd rather do your own thing mm. rather than to do God's thing. So here's the question. And, and here's the thing that we have to look at when we look at true faith as we close. Uh, true faith is going to call, Jesus said uh, that you've got to follow him daily and that you've you got to die to who? Self. Amen. And, and when you die to self, things, there's going to be a cost with it. If you're involved in a ministry, I don't care who what you're doing. Amen. There's a cost that goes with it. Amen. Mm. And what you're saying to the Lord is that, Lord, it's not about me. Mm. It's about you. That's why, hey, don't just up and quit. <laughs> Amen. Did God give you direction? Amen. I'm, I'm talking to us now. Amen. Did, did, did God do it? Or is it something that you want to do? Because, yes, uh, uh, some people may want to stone you. Amen. <laughs> But are you doing what God would have you to do? Because what he's saying here, it's going to cause for, call for a sacrifice, a commitment. You're going to have to give something over in your life, and you're going to have to give it over to the Lord. And you're saying, Lord, I'm, I'm willing to give it all uh, to you. That's what Rahab did. That's what Abraham did. And their faith was a lie. Because belief without Behavior is dead. Belief without behavior is dead. Praise the Lord, saints. You know, I like, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to just give you one action item and you can look at the rest. Um, there was, I, I like one thing that uh, uh, was said in our uh, uh, things to do uh, and how to, how to apply this lesson. And they said, go to a friend that you know is mm, a godly person, a trustworthy person. You know, like I can talk to my wife and I can say, and I can get real about yourself and talk about some areas in your life. It, how do I manifest mm. that my faith is real? And, the, and if, if there are points that are made about, ooh, honey, here's an area where you can grow. Guess what you ought to do? You ought to listen and you ought to work on that. <laughs> Amen. Because that's something, uh, uh, because you want to bear fruit. You want to bear fruit for the Lord. You don't want to be fruitless. Amen. I'd hate to get to heaven and there was nobody there that I witnessed to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something wrong with that picture. And, and maybe I won't be there. <laughs> Amen. If that be the case. Uh, but but uh, you, you want to have some people, you, you want to be used by the Lord, and, and uh, uh, you don't want that dead faith, you want that living faith. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we are certainly challenged by your word today, dear God, and none of us are spotless. All of us have areas, dear yes, God, Lord. that we can grow, <clears throat> that we need to clean up. Help us to be accountable to one another and most important, to be accountable to you. Lord, give us itching ears to hear your word and to, and, 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 and Lord, speak to our hearts. And Lord, may we submit to you in obedience and glorify your name because you're worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised and honored. And Father, we, we don't want to be apathetic. We, there, there are too many people out there that are dying every day. And, and Lord, we can make a difference. Help us to do our part. We pray this in Jesus' name, and your will be done. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. All of you. Thank you. Amen. Amen.
Hey, and next week at Bethlehem is the 120th anniversary. Pray for us. Amen. Oh. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Pray for us. And, and we're going to have a great time in the Lord. And come back because we'll have our Sunday school class uh, next week as well. Strength. Yes, you are our yes, all in yes. all, Lord, and we 
love to praise your yes, name. Yes. We're glad to be in the number this, this morning, dear God, where we can praise you. And Father, we, we come humbly because, Lord, we need you, dear God. Yes. Father, I ask that you would forgive me of my sin. Yes. I come with Penance, Heavenly Father, and I Give come Lord, with a heart Jesus. that is committed to, to do your will, Lord. Yes, Lord. Strengthen each of us, Lord, where we're yes. weak, where we're torn down, dear God, and use us, Lord, that we might bring glory to your name is yes. our prayer. Now, Father, we want to thank you. There's so much to be thankful for. Yes, thank you for health and strength, dear God. Thank you for the freedom to worship. Yes. Thank you for saving our soul. Yes. Lord, you've taken care of so many of my loved ones, many that traveled thousands of miles this past week, Lord. Yes. Bless them to come and to go. Yes. They were well at their home. Yes. It's you, dear God. We know that every good and perfect blessing comes from you. Yes. We thank you, Lord, that you have blessed us. There's not as many of us here as there used to be, dear God, but the Heavenly Father, there's still a passion. Yes. There's a love for you, dear yes. God. Yes, Lord. Lord Jesus' Lord, name. Continue Father. in your name, yes. dear God. Yes, Lord. And, and, and Father, thank you for 120 years. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that one day somebody spoke into my life, Heavenly Father, and told me about Jesus. Yes, Lord. They were part of this church family. But Father, we know we can't let that die with them. We must continue. Help us, dear God, yes, uh, yes. to be bold witnesses for you. Father, bless the pastor as he speaks your the word. Yes, Lord. Lord. I pray Jesus for people that are sick and unable to be here. Yes, I spoke Lord. to some this week, Heavenly Father, and, and some just aren't physically able. But Lord, yes, I you are with Lord. them. Jesus I pray your Lord. blessings on them, dear God. Yes, I pray Lord. for those that are backslidden. Yes, Father. Rejected you, Heavenly Father. Yes. We have no desire to be here. Yes, but Lord, we're here that we might receive your word as a spiritual hospital. Yes. Because we don't want to be the same when we leave here, dear God. Yes. We want your will to be done as always our prayer. Uh, so, Father, we just look forward to what you're going to do. Yes, Father. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray and may his will be done. Amen. 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 A familiar passage of scripture. You may know it by heart. Turn to it. It is Psalm 1. Amen. Psalm 1. We'll read all six of those verses. Psalm 1. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. It is in the law of the Lord, and his law to meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Yeah. 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 Not so, for like the shaft which wind drieth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Together, for the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. 
the Lord. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Amen and praise the Lord. It's time for our offering. Praise the Lord. Oh, that sounds good. It's time for our offering. Praise the Lord. Our giving determines what? Our giving. Amen. And want to remind you of the special offering next uh, Sunday. Uh, 120 years we will be celebrating. If you are able, we want you to give uh, a dollar per year. Amen. And praise the Lord. And also, we're going to try to get back on track with our building fund. I believe we wanted to have a dollar per day as a part of our building fund. Amen. Amen. Amen and praise the Lord. name amen and praise the lord we have a few announcements before we get in the word this morning friday september the 23rd we're going to be fasting and praying from 7 a.m to 7 p.m we're fasting and praying for our church anniversary we're fasting and praying for the revival and fasting and praying for those who need a touch from the lord amen Amen and praise the Lord. And we are excited about 120 years of celebration. Minister Eric Reed is going to come and share with us once again. And we are so excited about this 120 years. Uh, just to be able to make it to the last two years is a testament to God's grace and glory. And in Bethlehem, we're standing the test of time. Amen. And we are proving what Bethlehem was built on is on the rock of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we come celebrating. And once again, those who are able, I want you to give uh, $1 per year. Or just give what God lays upon your heart. Amen? Amen? I always do it like this. You give a dollar a day, a quarter a day, a penny a day. Amen. Just do the 120, all right? <laughs> Let's do the 120. <laughs> We're going to have a revival and excited about this and preparing October the 3rd through the 5th. And we are so excited about this time. It's going to be a great and fun time. He's not just a revivalist. He's a friend. And uh, those of us who've been around him love to get around him and love to laugh. And, and God is going to move that week in a mighty and awesome way. We want you to be there. Amen. We want you to invite family and friends to be there. Amen. And we are excited about what God is about to do. Amen. Amen. 
another announcement. We pray for moderator Kurt D. Rushing, and uh, he made it out of the hospital by the time we were out of the 3 o'clock service, and we praise God for that and pray and continue to pray for him and his whole family. Amen? Amen and praise the Lord. Let's go ahead and get into the word this morning. This morning we're continuing a series. And this is actually the uh, theme for the revival. Expect the unexpected. As we're going to be looking at and standing on Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. According to the power that is at work within us. And this sermon series is being preached so that everyday Christians can expect God's miraculous power to be at work in their lives on a daily basis. And it's really a, a series about faith because how can you expect something that you can't, that you don't know how or what to expect? Uh, what this sermon series is just to, uh, to let you know that every day is God. Amen. And you don't know what he's going to do, but you believe by faith that he's going to do something. Amen. I said you believe by faith that he's going to do something. That's how you expect the unexpected. And we've uh, preached in this series, uh, expect the unexpected in creation, expect the unexpected in the city, expect the unexpected in a crowd or in the country. And we're going to continue in this series and we're talking about this morning, expect the unexpected in the church. Mm -hmm. Expect the unexpected in the church. And we're going to be reading Mark uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Um, would you please stand in reverence to the word of God? Stand symbolically saying that I'm going to stand on the word of God in Jesus' name. Let's read this together out loud at the same time on three. One, two, three. And a man with a shriveled hand was there. Some of them were looking for a reason to abuse Jesus, so they watched him closely to see if he would heal him on the Sabbath. Jesus said to the man with the shriveled hand, Stand up in front of everyone. Then Jesus asked them, Which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they remained silent. He looked around at them in anger, and he expressed that their stubborn hearts said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was completely restored. Then the Pharisees went out and began to fight with the Europeans how they might kill Jesus. Amen. You may be seated in the household of the Lord again this morning. We're going to talk about expect the unexpected in the church. Expect the unexpected in the church. And we're going to look at or observe uh, three movements in the text. We're going to look at or observe that Jesus went to church. Uh, we're going to look at and see what Jesus did with the cripple, and we're going to look at it and see how Jesus was the cure. Jesus went to church. Uh, we're going to look at Jesus, how, how he handled the cripple, and we're going to see how Jesus provided a cure. And we want Christians to know this morning that God has the power to display his power in the church. Let mm -hmm. me say it again. Right, right. God has the power to display his power in the church. The church. We're going to look at this brief video and then we'll get into the word. Jesus asked him, 
which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? They remained silent. He looked around at them in anger and, deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts, said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was completely restored. Then the Pharisees went out and began to plot with the Herodians how they might kill Jesus. Amen. And praise the Lord. Amen. And praise the Lord. Talking about this morning, expect the unexpected in the church. And uh, we've been looking at the maps ever since loyalty month. And uh, we try to place Jesus on the map before we start uh, the message. And Jesus is up here in Galilee. He's up here in Galilee. My little pointer is not pointing, but hopefully you can see that. He's at a place uh, right near the Sea of Galilee called Capernaum. Capernaum. Uh-oh. I missed it. <laughs> so I guess we'll move on. He's at a place in Capernaum. Uh -huh. And uh, Capernaum is, we learned a few months ago, was where Jesus moved to after he left Nazareth. Because you remember in Nazareth, he couldn't do miracles in Nazareth because the people didn't believe. You know, it's, it's hard to pass the kinfolk. Uh -oh. And uh, I think, Reverend, here, I, I've heard so many uh, <laughs> testimonies about how hard for it was him for him to pass his kinfolk. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Jesus couldn't pass his kinfolk, so he moved from Nazareth. And you can see it down there, kind of in the middle there. He moved from Nazareth uh, all the way over to Capernaum up there. And it was there where his ministry took off. Right. It was there where many, many miracles happened. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and this miracle that we're going to talk about today is not, uh, and I wondered, and I, I wondered, this miracle that we talk about today. We don't talk about it that much. All right. Uh, we don't talk about it that much because it, he wasn't a leper. His whole body uh, wasn't uh, torn apart. He, he wasn't blind. Mm -hmm. um, he, he wasn't raised from the dead. And this is one of the least talked about miracles that you... We'll see on the face of the scripture. I think I, I've never preached on this miracle before, and I've been preaching now for over about 25 years. Uh -huh. right. And I've never preached. And I say, why have I never preached this miracle? Huh. And, and, and I began to think and use my sanctified imagination. Uh, um, I, I didn't uh, preach this because this miracle in modern day terms didn't go viral. Uh, it, it didn't go viral like Lazarus being raised from the dead. Now that went viral. All right. uh, this was simply a man who had a withered hand. Well. Okay. He could just said he had a, 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 a withered hand. So he wasn't even like what they was portraying him in the clip there. Because they made it kind of see, uh, seem like his whole body was crippled as he was walking in. But the text says that it was just his crippled hand. Okay? And Jesus had the power to heal something that would, for us would be mundane. But if you had a crippled hand, uh -oh. hello somebody. Yeah. Hello somebody. Yeah. This is miracle ain't what you're talking about. But if you were uh, had a crippled hand, guess what? You'd want a touch from the master. Right. Hello somebody. Well, and there's somebody here today, uh, you want a church from the master, and, and it's not that you're, that, that you're dead or, or, or facing death. It, it's not that you, that you got leprosy. It, it's not that you, oh, that, 
that, that, that, that it's, it's something that others would chew or think to be major. Uh, and, 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 but, but, but when you have a crippled hand, guess what? A lot of people who get crippled, what's the first thing they stop doing? Going to church. <laughs> All right, man. Because uh, a lot of times uh, we're so we, we, we're so prideful that we uh, we can come to church when we can walk straight, but we won't come to church when we're living. Uh oh. We, we can come to church when we can walk straight, but 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 we won't use a walker or a cane. All right. We, we, we get so uh, in ourselves and think that all oh, these folk going to look at me and make fun of me that I'm not going to show up when I'm crippled. And, and it's right. not just physical crippled. Sometimes, sometimes folk won't show up because they went through a divorce. And it's crippled them and they, and they feel embarrassed. Some folks won't go to church because they got laid off mm. from their jobs. And, yeah. and they were once the biggest givers, but now they don't want to show up because they can't give the way they used to give. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. And my, and my encouragement for you today is regardless of what problems you're going through, whether big or small, you need to always go to church. Yeah, keep Hello, coming. Somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep coming to church. Yeah. Hello, somebody. I know it's hard sometimes, <laughs> especially with that divorce thing. That's why we. That's why God hates divorce. It's almost always always happen when you go through a divorce. Both people stop coming to church. Well, when they go through a divorce, mm -hmm. he hello somebody, hello somebody, a and they don't go to another church. We made a covenant. When we when we read the covenant, we we Sweet. say that as soon as we leave this church, what we we're will. supposed to do? We're supposed to connect to another church. Hello right. somebody. Oh, so the devil has crippled you this morning. Uh, my first encouragement to you is to don't go, don't stop going to church. Right, right, right. Hello, somebody. Right. Because guess what? Point number one, Jesus went to church. Yeah. Right. And, and, and here it says, another time Jesus went into the synagogue. And let's not just miss that another first. Yeah. But she should indicate that this was his practice. Jesus never not stopped going to church. All right. This just was another time. Hello, somebody. He went into the synagogue, and that's what we're calling the church now. Uh -huh. Jesus always went to church. Always. And, and I, it gets on my mind, and I think, how can you think that you are a Christian and not go to church? <laughs> Hello, somebody. Now I'm missing. I'm yeah. missing now. Yep, yep. Because because somebody say, hey, I watch you online every week, Reverend. Yeah. <laughs> Reverend, I, I listen to your podcast every week. All right. I download it to my phone every week. Uh -huh. he hello, somebody. Hey, hey, no, I'm sorry yeah. to tell you. That nothing can take place of the church, the assembly of believers. God says, forsake not the assembly Thank of God. believers. Yeah, yeah. But then I've seen and heard during COVID people, oh, people who would quote that to you for 40, 50 years, uh -oh. stop coming to church. Uh -oh. God didn't say stop coming to church because of COVID. Right. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Now, I can understand, you know, you may have had a problem with the governmental thing that, you know, they closed, may have closed us down. And, 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 and but, hello, we've been open. Hello, somebody. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've, been, we've been open. Hello, somebody. As a matter of fact, we never closed. Right, hello, right. Somebody. <laughs> hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Good point, man. Hello. Jesus went to church, then how much more so should we go to church? Oh. We go to church. Jesus went to church. Another thing we saw is that some folk who were going to Sunday school didn't believe what was being taught in Sunday school. Uh -oh. 
Because yeah. we as Christians are taught to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Right. And many folk didn't want to come to church because they didn't want to die. Well. Tell <laughs> somebody. So you live they, they, they didn't want to die. Wait a minute. Christians are afraid to die. Uh-oh. Woo. Hello, somebody. Don't you know? Well, sh you know, I, you know, like I always say, to get my testimony. I ain't afraid to die, but I'm concerned about how God's going to put me through. <laughs> <laughs> how you gonna die, <laughs> I, I want to die on my bed, Reverend. Yes, <laughs> I don't want to struggle now. I'm already struggling now. I don't want to <laughs> get sick and carry disease for years and die. I done struggled enough. Hello, somebody. Yeah. yeah. Now, saying that, as Christians, we shouldn't be afraid to die. We right. shouldn't allow anything to come ah, up against God's word. Gee, if Jesus went to church, guess what? We, yeah. How much more so should we go, want to go to church? Help yep. somebody. Yep. I understand you might have some issues at the church that you're at. You yep, know, uh, I, I understand that you may have gone too far. Uh, uh, as far as you can go with the church and you want to go to another church well yeah. but in you're looking for another church don't you be out of church for two or three four five years hello somebody <laughs> hello <Yeah>. somebody <laughs> <laughs> I still ain't I ain't found a church yet Reverend yeah. <laughs> you ain't visit the 40 churches that are in Paul's Valley or more hello somebody Christians must go to church. A few years ago, I probably wouldn't even preach this point. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Mark chapter 1, 21 says, And Jesus said to his companions, uh, and his companions went where? To Capernaum. And right away, and right away, where did Jesus go? To the synagogue. Right away. He, he didn't have to slack it and take him uh, two years or uh, uh, two months to go to the synagogue. He said when he got there, he went right away. Hello, somebody. I didn't have to think about it. Oh, he was just being about it. Hello, yeah, 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 Are yeah. you that kind of Christian today? Uh-uh. Can you on Sunday morning go to church right away? All right. And, and, and make it to Sunday school, you say, oh, Reverend, you're really messing now. <laughs> so go right away. Yeah, Hello, yeah. somebody. Yeah, oh, and if you go on Zoom, don't come in the middle of the class on Zoom. Oh, after 20 minutes of the study, you need to be there early. Hello, somebody. Right yeah. away. Yeah. And then when Zoom in, come on to the church right away. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> so, preacher, you're meddling on this simple point. But Jesus went to church and he went to church right away. He got yeah. there on time. On time, Melly for real. Hello, somebody. Not in time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Even yeah. I mess up some. You know, most Sundays I'm just in Sunday school in time. <laughs> I need to learn to get early. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Yeah, yeah. Hello, somebody. Should be a party. What time do you go to the game? Uh-oh. Early. <laughs> Hello, somebody. What time do you go to the game? So most folks show up. They they uh they uh they might be out there before that. They might be what what what's that called? Yeah, two yeah. hours before the game, tailgate. tailgate. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Can we begin the tailgate on a Sunday morning? Hello, somebody. <laughs> Woo! Preacher, well, we need a tailgate. Hello, somebody. Church, a tailgate to give you bring some food downstairs. We got a fellowship hall. Come on, yeah. come on, yeah. Bring the food and tailgate. Say, woo! I can't wait till the Lord begin to work down there. Oh, it's Sunday school. I studied my lesson for oh, all week long, and God has a, a word He's already given, but He's gonna give me a little more. I can't. Wait. Yeah. Hello, somebody tailgate. Yeah. I can't wait to Sunday service. Yeah. Oh, hello, so, you know why a lot of people go to uh, uh, they go to the games early. You know why? Good seat. Yeah, good seats. Yeah, that could be. But if you got good seat, you know you don't even have to show go ahead, Ellis. <laughs> you 
you're going to be on the, on the 50 yard line. <laughs> they go to socialize, you know, right? right? And let me tell you the number one reason I think I hadn't just not watched it in the studies. But I think the number one reason why they go to church early is because they have a winning team. All right. All right. Well, go through. Get ready. They, they, they have a winning team. And folk, oh, that's right. When they come to church, they're not a part of a winning team. And folk can think that since it's not as many people who are here before. Oh, they, oh they're not a part of a winning team. Oh, and I said, oh, when the church was full, and I say it now, that our God is on the throne. And God don't need a crowd to show up. Hello, somebody. Right. Matter, Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. God moving in the country. Hello, somebody. God moving in exclusive places. Yeah. Uh, oh. If you're part of a winning team, you want to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All the time. <laughs> All the time. Help somebody. I, I still look forward to who coming to church. I, I just, I just oh, yeah. love it. Yeah. I, I, I love it. Yeah, sir. Hello, somebody. Amen. So much so, I, I'm not even looking for those. Oh, you know, some fans, they have, uh, some teams, they have fans that put bags over their heads. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the kind of Christians we have. Hello, somebody. Yeah. They stop showing up because they got the bags on their head. They Whoa. think they're part of a losing team. Our God is worthy to be praised. Yeah. Our God is seated on the throne. Yeah. Oh. Folk, I see it in here. Still, He's on the throne. Yeah. And that's why I don't have to go to Dallas, New York, Chicago. Oh, looking for a move from the Lord. I come here today looking for a move yeah. from the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right there too, Because yeah. to tell the truth, all of us are crippled in some kind of way. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Somebody. Right, we all have stuff that may, maybe other yeah, folk man. don't see or we yeah. can hide. Right. Oh, and we all have something that we may be able to hide. We all are crippled like that in some kind of way. Yeah. And I need a touch from the Lord. Yeah. Oh, on a weekly basis in the place that he says I should be to worship his holy name. I need to show up even when I'm crippled. I need to show up even when life oh for me has began to cripple. That Greek word for there can also it means to be crippled or dried up. What in your life has dried up oh since 2020 oh what in your life has dried up. It could be the church. It could be your work. It could be your family. It could what has dried up but I hear to tell you that regardless of what is dried up or how crippled you are you better show up to the church looking for a move from the Lord even if it don't have to be one of those great miraculous moves oh Lord oh you've been provided but in this area I'm broke oh from you. This is not something that's going to go viral, yeah. but I need you yeah. to move yeah. on my behalf. Lord, this is something little, yeah. but I need you to move yeah. on my behalf. Oh, yeah. And you show up the church. Yeah. Hello, yeah. somebody. Yeah, show up the church. Jesus went to church. Yeah, yeah. Amen. How so you figure? Man. And he went, and went, went right away. Hello, somebody. Mm. Yes. Hello, somebody. Didn't hesitate. Yeah. Right. Right. Ah, so it's time for us to come back in Jesus' name. Yes, right. But you got to come back with the right mindset. You got to come back yes. with the right attitude. You got to come back not looking for the quietest thing, not looking for the preacher to preach. Yes. Oh, you come back looking for Jesus. Hello, somebody. Yeah, word, Thank you for word. Jesus. I'm a, it, it has been my dream for, for folk to show up here, not uh, because of Pastor Eton, but for folk to show up here and look in the pulpit trying to find Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Talk 
talk about him so much yeah. and he's so alive that yeah. they show up uh, thinking they're going to be able to see him in the flesh. Well, mm -hmm. Woo. Yeah. Jesus went to church. Mm -hmm. How much more so should we yeah. go to church? Yeah. yeah. Well, Hello, somebody. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Talking about expect the unexpected in the church. And, and the unique thing about the church that I see sometimes in the text is they don't expect a move from God in the church. Or they don't have enough faith for Jesus to work mm. in the church. All right. mm. well, Hello, somebody. Yeah. They just having church. Mm. They just having Bible study. Uh oh. <laughs> they just having Sunday school. Oh, yeah. But they're not really looking for Jesus to oh, do anything. Well, make a move on it. Hello, somebody. They're not, they not looking for him to heal anything. Uh -oh. They just come to church. Right, right. <laughs> Hello, somebody. And, 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 and one of the greatest things, I preach about this all the time. I say, I don't preach about this enough, the will at hand, but the paralyzed man. Yeah. Y'all remember the paralyzed uh, man who had four friends? Yeah, 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 yeah. A and the church was full of folk. Yeah, yeah. Who's in the house with that? Full of folk. Yeah, who's in there? It was packed. They had, the, they had an overflow. Yeah. Hello, somebody. And so much so right, that right. this man who was crippled, yeah. paralyzed, yeah, right. couldn't get in. All right. He had good friends sure who was willing to bring him to church yeah, because they believed God could work and God could move. Yeah. Oh, but when they ran into the crowd, now uh -oh. I say God ain't impressed with a crowd. No, if right. God was impressed with a crowd, the temple in Jerusalem would still be here today. All right. Hello, somebody. You know how many times that temple got destroyed? Mm -hmm. Cause and they had a crowd. Yeah. yeah. They, yeah. they said there was a multi-million dollar industry. The temple. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Hello, somebody, because you know they had to buy the lambs and all of that. A multi-million dollar industry. And God destroyed it. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Yeah. 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 He destroyed it because he's not. He'd rather have a remnant who <laughs> believes. Yeah. Mm. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. A remnant who believes. And, and folks showing up to church, and it was evident during COVID because you would have thought that uh, if I wanted to be healed, uh, don't shut down the church, Governor. Yeah. yeah. Hello, somebody. That's a healing place. Mm -hmm. it's supposed to be a healing right. place. Yeah, My yeah, house yeah, should yeah. be called a house of prayer. Then we need. Then we need prayer. Yeah, amen. Yes. Somebody. I said, yes. one place I wouldn't have closed down, Mr. Governor, yeah. mm -hmm. was the church. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Yeah. That's just me. Yeah, all right. Hell, that's what I believe. All right. But if you don't believe, you just think this is a super spreader event. Mm. Better close right. these doors down. <laughs> <laughs> that's just what I believe. These four friends who, who, who had a cripple, oh, all the way cripple. Yeah. Didn't allow the crowd to stop them. Yeah. They went to the rooftop. And what did they do? They did that, what I call that George Clinton theology. They tore the roof off. Right. The roof off. Right. Yeah. And set their friends down. And that text began. And it said that Jesus had the power to heal them. Yeah. That Amen. was before the cripple came. Right. Which seemed to indicate there were more folk in there that need healing. Right? Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, that's a folk who showed up all oh, this morning. They need a touch from the Lord. And you don't know nothing about it. Oh, they hadn't told anybody. Oh, but they had enough faith to show up. It's always, oh, blows my mind. Oh, the heartache and pain that many Christians show up on Sunday morning. And they don't want the church to pray. But they say, Pastor, you pray. You know? All right, all right. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. It's amazing that, 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 that folks show up with. They need a God who has the power to heal. Yeah. Yeah. See, anybody here needs some 
healing this morning. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is there anybody in here can admit, oh, I may not be crippled, yeah. oh, like a man and went down on the roof, yeah. but there's some part of my body, some yeah. part yeah. of my life, some parts of my bank account, some part yeah. that's crippled, and I showed up yeah. this morning believing that you got a power yeah. to touch, and you got the power to heal yeah. in Jesus' name, and I don't have to make a big deal about it, I don't have to show up and yeah. come down, oh, and ask the church to pray for me, I had enough faith yeah. to show up, and I believe you're going to touch me, you're going to move in a mighty and awesome way, yeah. you're going to heal me, because I'm going to sneak up yeah. in the church, like that woman in the crowd, yeah. oh, Touch too, Evan, like you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Somebody needs a touch. Yeah. Oh, they studied. Oh, their Sunday school. Oh, they had. Oh, they had the series and they're going before me and they're studying the series. Oh, they show up every week. Oh, but they need. They studied about it. Now they need to be about it and allow it to work and move in their life by faith. And I pray right now. Yeah. That somebody came yeah. here needing a touch from the Lord. Yeah. And I'm praying right now, Father God, yeah. that you heal them, Father, right now. Yeah. That you encourage them, Father, yeah. right now. Yeah. Oh, they don't have time for release. Yeah. They need a relationship. Yeah. They need to know yeah. that you care. Yeah. Oh, they need to know yeah. that you're still healing Good right day. now. In Jesus' name, I need a touch. I need a touch. Yeah. I showed a cripple. Yeah. Oh, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yeah, I can walk and talk like everybody else. Yeah. But I'm crippled. Yes, sir. Hello, somebody. And he says, another time, Jesus went into the synagogue. Another time again, there's that, that another again. He made a, uh, 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 it was his his desire to be in the synagogue, in the household of the Lord. Like right. David, his desire was to be in the household of the Lord. Yeah. And then they noticed, uh, he noticed a man with what? With a shriveled hand. A shriveled hand there. That's a man with a shriveled hand. And this, yeah. these places, these people were so evil. Guess what they were trying to do? Mm -hmm. Watch it. Mm -hmm. Why are they watching and, and, and want to see if Jesus hit them? Seemed like they would want healing to take place. Yeah, yeah, right. Hell, some They didn't. Yeah. And with legalists, they didn't want healing to take place on the Sabbath. Why? Somebody explain it to me. It was the law. Why? What part of the law was it? Anyone? You got to be detailed one about created. it. <laughs> it was one they created. And guess what? It was work. They were supposed to work on the Sabbath. I make no sense. Anyway, any day I want God to work. <laughs> it's on a Sunday. Hello, somebody. Yeah, yeah. I need him to work all yeah. throughout the week. I'm busy. I'm running, doing all this other stuff. Yeah. Oh, and I gotta take care of that work at work. Oh, and I gotta take off. I got a time off, yeah. and, and I made it to the house. Yeah. Any day I want God to work. Yeah. Should be the Sabbath or now the Sunday. Yeah. Right. Right. Hello, so they make nobody's good sense. <laughs> Can you imagine? I'm crippled. Right. Showing up, and Jesus could heal me, and they said, "No, no, no, <laughs> right, <laughs> not today." I'm getting mad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, not today. <laughs> the church is closed on healing. It's open on everything else, but closed on healing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't want you to get better. Huh? <laughs> Never want God to be closed. Hello, somebody. Right, 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 right. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Especially when it comes to man. Yeah. Where you make up this stuff? Right. That's it. <laughs> And I can really meddle this morning, but I think I'm running out of time. Oh, man, I am out of time. Huh. All right. There's some things that we make up. Yeah, and we put 
Treat it like it's holy. Hello, somebody. And for years, we had to be G'd up to show up to church. Where did that come from? Where did that come from? To giving God, you're giving God your best. Yeah, oh, yeah. oh, you G'd up and you're showing up to church and you don't even tie? You giving God your best? Yeah. Hell, some some yeah. of the yeah. biggest yeah. robbers in the church yeah. are those who G'd yeah. up. I hate to mail myself. <laughs> I hate to mail myself. <laughs> but, but what you don't know about me is, is I, I, I used to go G'd up everywhere, okay? <laughs> But I'm mailing myself too. I'm the biggest robbers. That's what the Bible says. Right. We talked about uh, last week in that wonderful Sunday school that was taught last week. We want to put these folk up rich. Mm -hmm. Oh, they rich. Let's, let's put them in the VIP. Right. Come on up forward. Yeah. They the one robbing you blind. Yeah. <laughs> robbing you blind. One percent of the world owns most of. The wealth in the world today, one percent. Wow. How is that? Wow. Because they ain't giving nothing to win. <laughs> they want more of you. Don't have to pay taxes. Say the man, uh, one rich man, uh, was in a lower tax bracket than the uh, than the secretary that he was work that was working for him. Hello, somebody. Why you want to? Oh, put these kind of people up. Right. right. Hello, somebody. Why you don't want God to work and move? How, how is it that you're so legalistic? Well, hello, I'm so glad Jesus wasn't le a legalist. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. Is anybody else here glad that Jesus wasn't yes, legalistic? Yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad that God would work and move yeah. regardless of people and tradition. Right. Right. Amen. In Jesus' name, I have to go on down. I talk about the cure before I leave today. All right, yes, sir. The cure, the cure. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. What does the Bible say that Jesus did? Right, right. <laughs> First of all, Jesus was angry. Good Not thing. too many times in the Bible where it says Jesus was angry, but a lot of time it had to do with that temple. Right, yes. That they worshiped. That's right. With and the rules that they made up to right. worship at the temple. And right. Jesus was angry here. He was angry because he was deeply distressed at their what? Stubborn, Stubborn hearts. No belief. Hell of something. Didn't have a belief. All of them needing healing. But one man showed up to church. Yeah. <laughs> who's willing to admit that he was crippled. Like, yeah. Who's willing to admit that he was not perfect. Uh, who's willing just showing up. Uh, oh, who wasn't too proud for not to man. I tell you that some folks stopped coming to church. Uh, oh, because they had a stroke. Uh, oh, and they made it through the stroke. But they don't walk right no more. Yeah. And they don't talk right no more. And they're embarrassed uh, to show up at the church. Uh, yeah. Some folk were crippled. Oh, because uh, they were the biggest givers in the church. Uh, and got laid off. Uh, and can't give like they used to give. So they stopped showing up. Because uh, they embarrassed. Uh, why you got to be embarrassed? Uh, you were faithful. Oh, and the stuff that God called you to do. Uh, oh, how you think that God is disappointed at you? Because, uh, oh, you're moving in a different season. Uh, oh, you done put in your years. Uh, oh, you can coast. Uh, hello, somebody. You can coast. You did the right thing most of your life and the situation changed uh, which God was in it then you don't have to be depressed uh, just give what you can give yeah. and let God take care of the rest uh, in Jesus name that's why I said this 120 it ain't got to be a dollar oh for every year it can be a quarter for every year it can be a penny for every year we're celebrating 120 it can be a 120 dimes uh, oh Oh, because that's how uh, that I serve. Uh, oh, he will bless you. Yeah. Oh, for the, your sincerity of heart. Yeah. It's not how much you give, but that you're willing to give. Yeah. Uh, in Jesus' name. In yeah. Jesus. Uh, oh, told the man, stretch out your hands. Yeah. Uh, oh, and he stretched it out. It and the clean. man's hand was what? Completely restored. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Completely healed. Yeah. Uh, is there anybody here?
this month that needs to be completely healed, completely restored. Yeah. Oh, you've been half sick. Oh, you can't get over COVID. Yeah. Oh, you got over COVID, but oh, they say that's some stuff that lingers. Yeah. They say the cough uh, will linger. Yeah. They say the lack of taste uh, will linger. Yeah. You've been yeah. healed, uh, but stuff uh, yeah. is lingering. Oh, Lord, touch my body. Yeah. I want you to rebuke uh, even the leak, uh, yeah. even the little cr yeah. cripple that's in my life. I need you to touch uh, yeah. and move uh, yeah. right now. In Jesus' name, yeah. restore me, oh, yeah. Lord, complete it. Yeah. In Jesus' name, yeah. restore me, Lord, complete it. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Still Jesus' stuff. name. Yeah. I need to be completely, uh, completely restored. Yeah, yes, Lord. In Jesus' I'm with name. You. Yes, Lord. Luke tells us yeah, Jesus did mm -hmm. different vantage point after looking around at them. I don't even want to call them a name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> them bad boogers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said to the man, "Stretch out your hand." Stretch it out. And guess what? Why did he get healed? Obeyed. Because what? Hello, somebody. Yes, yeah, you're preaching my sermon. Because yes, of what? He obeyed. Because he obeyed. Uh, yeah. If Jesus tell you yes, to stretch out, you better call and you better stretch out yeah. in Jesus' name. Yeah. If he tell you to stretch out over the offering, yeah. you better stretch out yeah. in Jesus' yeah. name. Yeah. Oh, one woman who wrote the book, Bamboozled by Jesus, yeah. mm. talked about a time that, uh, that, 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 that she had to choose between paying her her rent and paying her tithes. She said she chose to pay her tithes. Right. Hello, somebody. Yeah. And God eventually showed up and showed up in her life so much so the whole world is talking about all oh, her commitment to the Lord yeah. in Jesus' name. Yeah. You better learn to stretch out yeah. for Jesus tell you to stretch out to do what Jesus tell you to do. Yeah. Oh, regardless of the time, regardless of the circumstance, you better learn to stretch out yeah. and just obey yeah. in Jesus' name. Yeah. Take your name and name yeah. out. Yeah. Oh, you better obey. You better obey. Yeah. You better obey. And That's stretch Jesus. out in Jesus' name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was Thank out of town a long time ago. I'm going to close, right? All right. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our eyes closed, heads about, saints are praying. Mm -hmm. I want to stretch out because Jesus okay. tells me to do That's this right. every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Lord, I, I have to stretch out because everybody in this place may not be saved. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everybody listening at the sound of my voice, oh, throughout our many uh, multimedias, mm -hmm. may not be saved. Right, right. And I got to tell you who Jesus is, who Jesus was. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. This man that told, oh, this God man that told a man to stretch out his hand was God's yeah. only son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if Jesus Christ tell you to do something. You just do it. And Jesus is saying right now, you've got to accept me as Lord and Savior. For the Bible says, oh, in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's Jesus. The Jesus we're talking about in the text, that whosoever believes in him, that's how you stretch out. You've got to believe in him. You've got to believe in the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ, yeah. and you shall be saved, hey. shall not perish, because uh, uh. there is a hell. We don't talk about it too much. There is punishment, yes, hell, yes. eternal punishment, mm -hmm. and to escape it, you've got to give your life to Jesus That's Christ, yeah. in Jesus' name. What, what, what. All eyes closed, heads are bowed. Are you willing to stretch out this morning? If you're willing to stretch out and give your life to Jesus Christ, I want you to slip out of your seat right now. Don't be embarrassed. Yeah. Like some folk who come to church crippled, they be embarrassed yeah. and don't want to come. Don't be embarrassed. Come on right now in Jesus' name. Is there one? Now I know in days like the days we're living in, most of us may be saved or are saved, but just in case, 
Remember, I'm not talking about church membership. I'm not talking about right. baptism. Because right. some folk got baptized when they were young, but they didn't get saved. Well, all right. Amen. Amen. Some, some folk joined the church, but they didn't. They didn't get saved. Didn't get saved. No. Yeah. Amen. So is that one today? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. And you don't have to do it right now. Maybe sometime alone in your private closet or go to a private place. Pray this simple prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe you died for my sins and was buried and raised again on the third day so that today I may be saved. And you pray that prayer in Jesus' name. If you sincerely believe, then you are saved. The next step you have to do, you don't have to come down publicly here, but your first real public profession of your faith is baptism. Yeah, yeah. So that's why you can't just be out there. So I was talking about Christians that don't come to church. You just can't be out there on your own. You need to be in the house to be baptized. Right. Is that one today? Is that one? Don't be afraid. Is that one? Also, remember, you can talk to me a little later after the service. Any of the ministers or deacons that are here. And we can lead you privately into a personal relationship with God. In Jesus' name. Amen. And praise the Lord. One final announcement. I will be preaching tonight at the Ecclesia Church as we continue our fellowship with them. And Ecclesia is going to counsel their services next week, and they're going to be with us in the service next week. So we're excited about our fellowship, and if the Holy Spirit leads you to come and be a part of that tonight. <clears throat> It'd be wonderful to see your faith. I mean, they just love them some Bethlehem. Y'all like a, like their big brothers. They just love you and love to see you. Amen. 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 So we'd love to see you tonight. Amen. Would you please stand? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. What was that? If each person does that, then you will. Bring enough to feed 12, you say? Okay, bring enough to feed 12. Uh, we're going to pray a special prayer for Reverend Russian. He has some lingering effects with COVID and about his taste. Uh, and we're going to pray and then give the benediction. All right. Father God, we come this morning, Lord, lifting up this man of God, Father who has been through so much these past years. And Father God, he, he's praying to be healed completely, to be restored, Lord. Because he hasn't had his taste in, in three months, Father. And, and it's been lingering, Father. And we just pray, Lord, that you touch him, Father. And that you make him whole and well again. Pray, Lord, for his esophagus and his neck, Father. Pray, Lord, that you touch that father and make him whole and well again. That you continue to show up and show out in his life, even as he's come. Oh, believing that he needs all oh, complete restoration in Jesus' name. And we read it in your word. And we believe it. We just don't want to have a Bible study. We want to experience your power. We just don't want to just hear your word. We want to experience your word. And Father, I pray that you touch him, restore him completely, Father. In Jesus' name. Father God, put your heads of protection around us. Keep us safe from our harm and danger until we meet again. Yes. And the people of God say, Amen. 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 Amen.
Christ, Lord, you are dismissed. Amen.